What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another video, another day, another dollar with your boy. We're going to be breaking down our futures contract per usual. We're going to be looking at our 30 minute time frame. We'll look at our weekly, we'll look at our daily time frames, and then we'll kind of get out of here. We're going to try to run through this as quickly as possible. Uh, so if you guys don't mind sticking around until the end, um, as hopefully we'll, you know, make it less than 20 minutes long. <laughs> Uh, before I get started, thanks for everyone that does support. If you guys don't mind, leave a like down below and we'll dive right into it. So what we're looking at right now is our 30 minute time frame. I uh, use bar charts or I uh, use bars, not, you know, candlesticks just so I can identify areas of interest easier. Um, but we are looking at what is a very uh, rare sighting. It seems these days we haven't seen a day like today in a very long time. Now, I was not present. Uh, for majority of the day to trade this, but man, mm, I wish I was here to trade it. Uh, I definitely think I would have uh, had a very, very good day trading this. It was very accommodating. It looks like just taking shorts on pushes up against a previous time frames high uh, seemed to have been the play for majority of the day. Um, surprisingly enough, we're looking at what um, seems to have been an open in the upper distribution, remember Friday, we left off on a double distribution day, right? I zoomed that in quite a bit there. Uh, but we left off on Friday with a double distribution day to the downside. If you guys remember, the weekly had just gone one time framing down, meaning we're setting higher or lower highs and lower lows. Um, and then same thing on the daily. The daily's going one time framing down, setting lower highs, lower lows. The trend is going lower, right? Well, on Friday, we had set a pretty nice pace towards the downside, had a little bit of consolidation down here, creating a double distribution, right? So this area up here being one distribution and this area down here where I'm highlighting being the other distribution, right? So we had a double distribution day down. So what sellers wanted to see when we opened up this Monday morning was Opening in the lower distribution, opening below the set of single prints, basically open below 50, uh, 51, 77, 50. If we could do that, uh, the market had a really, really good chance of continuing to push down lower. Well, we opened up in the upper distribution above my line in the sand of 5,200. And we opened up here, but note how we, even though we opened up here, we never took out the previous day's high. We could not get, uh, from what I've seen, could not get the overnight high. If I'm looking at this properly, the overnight high was 52.13, and it would appear that we could not get it, or we just barely got it. If I'm looking at this properly, yeah, we could not take out the overnight high. Uh, so that was kind of a telltale sign that maybe this market was going to be a little bit weaker than what. Uh, was anticipated and sure enough it was b period opens up pushes up to the open cannot get back above the open rolls over gets below the 5200 level and a's low if we start one time framing down meaning in the 30 minute time frame we're setting lower highs lower lows we start to trend down lower creating a set of single prints even though it's an inside day uh, we create a set of single prints inside of the previous day's range pushing lower c period opens up pushes up, can't take back the set of single prints, another sign that this market may be stronger to the downside. So after opening above 5,200 level, it seemed that maybe we didn't want to stay up there. As we did roll over, push lower, immediately taking out the IB low. Remember the initial balance low, the IB low is, or the IB high, or the first two time frames, uh, high and low, or the first 30 minutes of each time frame, or the first hour in total. Uh, high and low, whichever way you take out or whichever you take out the higher low, typically you tend to go with that uh, to, towards you know a trend or not. Uh, in this case, we took out the initial balance low, pushing lower, attempting to go trend down even more so, but we had just gotten our toes into the lower distribution from the previous day. We dip our toe in there, we bounce up, fill one set of single prints, push up, but never could get back above C's high. Guess what? E, uh, after E period pushed up, F period could not take out uh, E's high. 
we begin to roll back over, create another set of single prints, and then we're off to the races to the previous day's low, come out of an inside day to the downside, create a much larger set of single prints, um, pushing lower, getting the next downside target of 51.24. Then we continue to push lower, getting the next target of 51.12.25, where the gap starts, and that gap gets filled at 50.57. Now remember, where I wanted buyers to hold uh if we did end up pushing here was well, going to be right around this 50 60 level buyers want to hold this area right they definitely want to hold this area and we'll i'll show you why here in just a second but if you guys remember from friday then you know why i want them to hold that 50 60 level but we did dip our toe into that gap area that's been holding for quite some time that gap started back on february uh 22nd is where we gapped up from. Well, three months later, two months later, we're getting into that gap. Finally, getting into that gap with a quadruple distribution day down. Now, let me identify those distributions for you. Each one is identifiable by the set of single prints it created. So I'm going to highlight first the sets of single prints so you guys will know. That is a set of single prints. This tiny bit right here I'm about to highlight is a set of single prints. This area right here that I'm highlighting is a set of single prints. So you can see between, or, or you have three sets of single prints, right? And in between you have price action or where you know price was traded more than twice. So here you have between A's high and A's low is the upper distribution, right? That's going to be the upper distribution. The second distribution is going to trade between C's high and um, D's low right here, 67. So right here is going to be your next distribution, right? You can see how we packed in volume there. Then we spiked lower a little bit. And then we get our next distribution, which is going to be our third distribution from, um, what is that time frame? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So it'd be G's high and G's low. That is going to be your third distribution. And then we have a really nice set of single prints here. And then you have your fourth distribution from the time frames high right there from 1230 until the low of the day down here at two o'clock. That is going to be your fourth distribution. So if you look in between, you see these intraday gaps, right? That's your, that's what you call your set of single prints. So that's how you identify those. Um, but each one of those areas will be something that we kind of need to keep our eye on moving forward. Um, but for today, they were areas of interest uh, or something to lean against on pushes up. So... Excellent opportunities all day long to take trades on the upside. I know I'm jumping all over the place. My brain's kind of scattered. Uh, allergies, allergy medication, you know the thing. Um, but on pushes up, you definitely had great opportunities to take shorts. Uh, so you could have taken shorts here in C period against the set of single prints. We push lower. Could have taken short against the set of single prints here. You would have been stopped out potentially. But I would not doubt that there were opportunities to take shorts uh, for a couple points on these pushes up here. Then in uh, because we were one time framing down and then in E period, we stopped the one time framing down. We came back into a balance. You could have taken a short in F period right here at 185, 5185, taking a short here. Maybe use 189 as you're out. Your stop is 40. Uh, your stop is four points, right? Your target is maybe um down here at 67 or even the previous day's low down here at 50 you're getting short 85 right you're getting short 85 and your target is going to be the previous day's low at 5150 your target is 30 points to the downside you're risking four points that is an excellent risk reward trade right there uh had you been you know had i been there to take it i definitely would have taken that trade right those are your two two areas of interest right you get in here your stop is there your targets here, right? Excellent trade opportunity. And technically, after F period could not take out that previous time frames high, we roll back over, we resume one time framing down, 
you're still confident that we're going to get this 5150. We push down lower. We get near it. Maybe you take one or two contracts off. Typically, I trade with five, uh, five to ten. Maybe you take one to two t contracts off here. You hit your target 5150. Take another two off, and now we're continuing to one time frame down. Nothing's telling you to get out of this uh, trade, even on this push up here, right? Maybe you didn't get involved here on this push up. Maybe you wanted for a little bit more confirmation. We push down lower. We create another little set of single prints here, right? Maybe instead you get involved here. You get involved at 64.75, right? You're risking two points at most to the upside where the single prints fill right here at 67.25. You're short 64. Uh, your target's 50. You're still making four points or 14 points on the downside, and you're risking two to three points on the upside. That's still an excellent risk reward trade. And even then, Maybe you're like, if we do, because we are one time framing down in the bigger picture on the weekly and the daily time frame, just keeping that big picture mentality in mind. You're like, okay, maybe I do take off a couple contracts once we do get that low. And because we are one time framing down, odds favor us getting towards that gap down here at 5112. And that's your next targeted area on the downside to take contracts off. So excellent opportunities on pushes up against the previous time frames high to uh, get short. Um, that was, those two were just two examples. You could have taken shorts uh, here at 51.23 against 51.27. Could have gotten short, roll over, get the low of day. You know, you're making 20 points on the downside. Here, 23.75, you're using 27 as you're out, risking four points. Target is low of day. You're still making roughly 20 points to the downside, even here. Um, well, maybe not so much here. You really don't want to get involved near the lows, right? Yes, you did make a new low in the day, but maybe that wasn't where you wanted to be. So, excellent couple short opportunities there. Definitely would not have been trading the last two time frames of the day just because those tend to be the most volatile. Now, I remember I said I was going to make this quick. I lied. Let's make let's mark these destinations. Mark these destinations as quick as possible. All righty, and there's our destinations. Uh, so let's start with our upside destinations. Come tomorrow, if we open up in our lower distribution, which is 5127 to 5094, you'll look to stay in the lower distribution. Hopefully, you would take out 5094 since we are one time framing on the downside. Uh, and then 5057, where the, uh, the gap gets filled. Uh, from the 21st of February, gap gets filled right here at 57.50. Then you have a target down here at 10 wide point of control, 50.37. On the upside, if we open up down here and we cannot take out the previous day's low, we will look to trade up into 51.27. Then there is a gap that gets filled at 51.53.75 where the single prints get filled. Uh, and then another small set right here at 65.25 get filled at 67.25. Then your next upside destination would be 5189.75 5201.75 is what this should say that will be your next upside target where the single prints get filled there so buyers want to hold today's low 5094 most certainly want to hold that if they cannot then we will continue to one time frame down and fill the gap and get below that destination on the downside of 5063 uh, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, but we could potentially uh, come tomorrow, trade between, uh, let's say, 5150 and today's low 5094 and pack in volume right here where this large set of single prints is or where they are located. So we could do a whole lot of chop in this range right here. Would not be surprised there until maybe we get a move to the downside if we cannot take out the previous day's low uh, right out the gate if we get any type of push or any volume to the upside these upside targets will most certainly uh, get hit as this isn't much uh, to lean against as it was today it won't be as much to lean against you definitely uh, if you are a seller you definitely want, don't want to get back above 5167 I would think uh, because if you do then your next target isn't until 5189 uh, but if you're a seller 
you definitely want to defend 5165. If you can, hopefully you'll roll back over and get 5094 on the downside. So uh, there you guys have it today in a nutshell. Let's look at the larger time frame. Let's look at the monthly real quick. And I'll show you why I'm saying 63. That was the last month's low. Last month's low was 5063. We take out 5063. The one time framing up on the date or on the monthly officially stops. Okay. The one time framing up will officially stop at 5063. We take out that low, we will come back into an initial two to three month balance, depending on how much we take back. Uh, so definitely want to see us um, hold that if you are a long term swing trader potentially uh, some somebody you know who's looking to swing trade there you're getting long around this 50 th uh, 50 level maybe that's your out right if you get out right there that's where you stop out at 63 because you don't know where your next downside target is until this month's low down here at 48 74 50 so like i said would not be it's not an unhealthy pullback from the highs right that's about a five percent pullback from the highs you don't want to see that be, uh, extend even more so towards the downside, but it's also not unhealthy for this market to have uh, a balance at some point before we finally get to rotating and moving back upward. So 5063 is a must hold for the monthly. Now the weekly, we're one time framing down. That is your target on the weekly. If you are a seller, right? If you're a seller, that is your target on the downside. It's going to be that 5063, and you can see right here we had those two weekly lows, very close, and that was also the the result of an outside week up. Right there, led us higher. We pulled back, so we are one time framing down two weeks in a row now. Really good extension below last week's low so far. We look to continue to do that on the downside. If you are a seller, buyers definitely want to take some of this back at some point in the future. As far as our daily goes daily firmly below the 50-day moving average getting into that gap um it's not going to show it on the continuous but we're getting into that gap back from uh february finally getting into that gap but really good volume today uh significantly above average here average is usually 1.2 we did 1.7 million in es spy was much much more um, but an out or an inside day down results in a really good push to the downside. A good extension below the previous day's low. One time framing down two days in a row now. Uh, firmly below the 50 day moving average. If we hold below there, like I said, your target is 5063. And then you look to target this gap. Uh, I guess technically we are in that gap here. Uh, according to the contract you know that we're trading but on the continuous that gap really doesn't start until 50 53 but on the contract that we are trading um the june contract that gap is where you're starting to get into that gap uh if you're back uh, back adjusting i said this video wasn't gonna be 20 minutes i fucking lied welcome to it <laughs> um and then i just want to real quickly look at spy let's look at the volume on spy today average Average volume on SPY is usually 71 today. We did 91 million. Excellent, excellent volume on today's day. Uh, down quadruple distribution to the downside. So keep that in mind. Very strong trend day to the downside. We are continuing that trend to the downside. Um, yeah. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I know this wasn't my best video out, but hopefully you enjoyed it. See you later.